So let's go to the phone lines and see what people have to say about this entire dynamic that we're seeing play out in our world. Cult members and their family members and supporters will go to the top of, of the queue. Ron, who is a police officer, I mean a cult member, uh, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome to the show. What do you have for us this evening? Uh, I've been a police officer for 10 years, Mark. Have been or still actively are? Still am. How do you enjoy your cult? <clears throat> well, I found your work. Um, do you like serving Satanists? You like serving sa I, the satanic elite of the world who are pedophiles? Do you want to have a conversation or not? No, I want to ask you if you enjoy serving the satanic elite. Because you don't know who you serve. You think you do, but you don't. See, I definitively know who you serve. It doesn't matter whether you don't, sir. You don't need to even know it in your own mind for it to be true. You think that what you understand about the world is true. You have no idea who you serve. None. I... None. You can continue now. I wanted to make that statement first. I first found your work on natural law. And what I do is try to enforce natural law. Again, what you're trying to do versus what you're actually doing are two different things. If you're still involved in this cult, what I'm trying to explain to somebody... Hold on, mute the caller for a moment so I could explain a point. What I want to explain is that the intention of what someone thinks that they are involved with versus what they are actually involved with are two different things. Do, what, if you would have asked the Nazi in Germany, what are you actively involved with? They would have told you, well, I'm trying to bring about this result in society. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to uphold the laws of our culture that are made by our politicians. It wouldn't have made the Nazis any less evil. It wouldn't have made them any less evil. What you can't see because you're too close to the, the dynamic, Ron, is that that's you. You're still involved in the cult of ultimate evil. Doesn't matter whether you don't understand it. Doesn't matter whether you perceive it differently. It doesn't matter whether your intention is honest, meaningless. All of those things are meaningless. And I'm just, I, it's just, I can't even believe we're still at a point where people don't grasp this in the year 2014 going on 2015. I still can't believe that they can fundamentally confuse intent with actuality of bringing harm into manifestation by what they support and condone. People in your cult are murdering people with impunity on a daily basis in this nation. And whether you understand it or not, you're part of that dynamic. Finish what you want to say. Unmute him. Yeah, how nice of you to unmute me. It's easy when you're behind the microphone. Yeah, that's correct, because it is my radio show, and if I'm going to make a point on the air, I'm going to do it, sir. Finish what you have to say. Let's see in some cuffs and make that same move, buddy. I don't do anything that's against natural law, so anybody that wants to try to put me in that situation will have to come and do it with the proper amount of force, because if I haven't done anything wrong to another human being, no one's taken my freedom. So, you're still in the satanic mindset. I'd love to see people like you come out of it, but you're committed to it for a reason. You can't admit you're wrong. You're not man enough. You're not man enough to admit one fundamental thing. You've been duped. You've been duped. See, that's what makes me infinitely more of a man than most men out there. Because I could look at myself in the mirror and say, I was duped. I figured out that I was duped. And then I had to take a long, hard look at the soul. Go through the long, deep, hard night of the soul. And say to myself, how do I let myself get duped like that? And now what am I going to do about it? But I went through that process. And I came out the other side of that process. I, and I, then became a force 
for truth and goodness in this life because people don't want to hear that hard truth of who they're really serving because they want to fundamentally believe that they're doing something good with their intentions when they don't really know who or what they're involved with at a higher level because they don't have enough knowledge they don't have enough knowledge and they don't haven't done enough reading and seeking and discovery in their lives to understand what they're really involved in and that's the fundamental dynamic nature of the problem that's not right man that's how it works that's not right back up back up oh that's not right what's that we don't mind if you guys want to observe. We just want you within a good distance. So that's not right. This is Berkeley PD we'll or UC Berkeley judge, PD? And the judge can decide whether or not it's right. And you're going to take his hard-earned money? Yep. People could drink on campus on, on football games and no tickets, but a hard-working man selling hot dogs, earning a living, gets his yeah, money well, taken away on, and a ticket. A he doesn't have a permit. He must have voted wow. for Trump. Wow. Yep, this is law and order next week. Law and order. Like no, it's not. I see people drinking. A fairly in serious mood on this campus evening. Who are as I've been perfect. for the last pretty good amount of time because of what I see going on in America today that absolutely is disgusting. And anybody who's not completely disgusted and outraged is an unconscious being. Period. I want to talk a little bit more about the techniques of cults that are used on the zombified, brainwashed population of cult members out there in the police and military. You know, I want to talk a little bit more about the people who support these people, if you even want to call them people, the justifications that they make for their behaviors, or what, what I would call the fundamentally false axioms that they believe in like they're not all bad they're not all bad all order followers are bad folks the dynamic of order following is bad that's what makes somebody a bad person they're willing to follow somebody else's orders by definition that's bad that's immoral this is what people can't understand because they can't logically process knowledge. They can't think. You can't make the conscious realization that if you are taking an action without actually weighing whether it is a right or wrong behavior first and you're just following an order from someone else, you don't understand that's what makes somebody a bad person. You have no idea what spirituality is at all. At all all how about this fundamentally false axiom uh, it's not them that are actually bad or evil it's just their behaviors or their actions that are bad or evil that's like saying oh nazis weren't bad people just what they did was bad no that doesn't make them a bad person oh really you can't be defined by your behavior well what better way of defining whether a person is a good or bad being than their behavior huh you want to come up with some different better criteria for that i mean just think about how illogical this is it's insanity it's brainwashing it's mind control to spit out this garbage totally flawed axioms that people don't even think because it's just rote coming out of their mouth like verbal diarrhea then you have all the absolute mental midgets who don't understand moral culpability or responsibility they want to think it's all the politicians' fault. Well, hell, the politicians ordered these police to go and shut down the illegal sales of Lucy cigarettes on the street. God forbid. How dare we do this against our masters? We certainly have to send armies of people to choke people into unconsciousness and death, most certainly, to put this absolutely horrific behavior to an end. You know, we can't have people interacting, you know, through uh, voluntary interaction on the street with goods uh, without the approval of their owners and lords.
How dare we? You know? And people want to say, that's the politician? Oh, I don't write the law. I just enforce the law. That's called, I'm just a mindless drone robot dog who does what I'm told, whether it's right or wrong. It's a joke. It's a disgrace. And the people who still don't understand this dynamic are completely unconscious and asleep. And that's the fundamental nature of the problem, folks. Is too many people support the actions of this cult and support the members of this cult personally. When what you got to say to evil is it's all a crock of crap. You got to say no definitively to evil. You got to say, I'm not having any of it. I'm not going to tolerate any of it. And you got to get up in people's face who engage in the dynamic of evil and say, this is unacceptable behavior. And it will stop. We will stop it. Because this is not going to continue to go on in this country unchallenged. And I'll guarantee it. If it's the last thing I do in this life, I will whip people into action to stop this dynamic. Or I'll die trying. We're real short on time, folks. You don't understand what time it is? It's 11.59.59. And you better start to understand it. People who can't get angry. You're not angry now? What would it take for you to stand up as a real man or a real woman? What would it take? Nothing. Because you're a slave who likes being a slave. That's all it comes down to. You don't have a drop of courage inside of you. That's what somebody who never gets angry is. A coward. A coward. So what happened with this Eric Garner situation is a politician gave an order. We can't have these slaves on the street voluntarily interacting with each other because we're not getting a cut. How dare they think that they can keep the product of their exchanges with each other without paying us a, a, a duty, without paying us our extortion fee. Slaves might get the idea they're no longer slaves. So get out on the street and harass them and put this practice to an end and stop them by whatever amount of force ca called violence that you don't actually have a right to engage in, that you need to engage in to make them stop doing what they actually have a right to do. There ain't no human being that interacted with Eric Gardner that he physically conducted violence against. And anybody wants to say that he was conducting a wrong behavior, you're talking out your ass. And you don't know what you're talking about because you don't know the difference between right and wrong behavior if that's what you think. And if you think that and you think what was done to him is somehow justified, you're a Nazi lover and you're a cult member supporter. Choked to death over selling somebody a cigarette. This is where we're at in America, folks. And the fact that people are outraged is an even bigger outrage than the act itself. Now, there is outrage. I mean, there, there are people who are outraged. They're out in the street over this. It's somewhat of a healthy sign, you know. But the fact that the average person in America is an absolutely turning their life upside down because stuff like this in general is going on. I'm not just talking about one of these incidents. I'm talking about the general state of things. The fact that they're not actively engaged in putting this dynamic to a rest. It, it speaks volumes about the total loss of morality in this nation. The total loss of morality. I'm just, I'm just sick to call the people around me countrymen. Anybody that I even live around. 
because they're just disgusting, absolute, immoral trash. I've been informed we have a cult member on the line. I have always focused on is that the order follower bears more, more emphasis added, more moral culpability than the order giver. Because through their actual behavior, they're the ones who caused the harm and brought that into physical reality. And if people don't understand that, I don't understand what's wrong with them. There is something wrong with their thinking. There is something fundamentally broken in their ability to analyze and logically think. If you don't understand that an order follower is more morally responsible for harm that results in the world than the one who spoke the order to them. I think most of the people who listen to this radio show do understand that, that truth. Keeping people sedate, keeping them, trying to keep them as calm as possible so that they could be led to slaughter without resistance. There's a war on testosterone, folks. This is another thing I'm going to talk about at Free Your Mind 4. They want, that's the, the chemical of rebellion, and they want that eliminated from society as much as possible. The chemical assault that people are under to arrest their development and destroy testosterone in society, which is not only essential for a man's development and the spirit of rebellion to be present in a man, but it's also necessary for women to have testosterone in their bodies to have hormonal balance, healthy uh, sexual um attitudes and um, uh, energy and for them to have an amount of rebellion within them not to just be enslaved and ruled so it's a, an essential compound for both men and women and that's why there's a war on it that's why there's so many over estrogenizing chemicals estrogen mimickers that take this compound out of the human physiology I, I personally know a an individual a man who's a, a friend of mine who had such a problem with testosterone I, I won't mention any names but had such a problem with testosterone that his doctor told him for all intents and purposes you have the hormonal balance of a woman your body is mimicking the hormonal aspects of a woman because your testosterone levels are so low they're almost non-existent for what they should be as a man. And ha this individual had to have testosterone injections. I, I don't, I'm not even sure he might even still be taking them. So, you know, I mean, th this is because of this chemical onslaught. The B, You know, things like uh, bisphenol A is another thing that attacks t testosterone and acts as an estrogen mimicker. Who knows what's in the heavy metal, toxic soup that they're spraying on us every day, being sprayed like bugs from the chemtrail assault. So, I think I've said what I want to say about courage today. I think people will get the gist of the message by what I've put out there and understand where I come down on this issue. I think, you know, there's still an enormous amount of ignorance in society. But I don't necessarily believe that any amount of talking is going to remedy that ignorance because these people are willfully ignorant. But not only willfully ignorant, they are cowards. Period. And their cowardice is not going to allow them to see the truth, accept the truth, and act upon the truth. And no amount of suffering is going to develop courage. Courage is something that has to be worked within the individual to be built up, to be built upon. And that takes time, especially if someone has lived in a state of cowardice, softness, weakness for their whole lives. That's why they want a society of so-called men that aren't men at all, raised by in many cases, single women who don't care about anything but creature comfort. 
getting their way, getting what they want out of men, getting what they want out of the state, and don't aren't concerned with freedom whatsoever, not even a little bit. These aren't men, folks. They're little children. They have arrested development. Not only spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physical arrested development. Because their hormonal balance is completely off. Their testosterone levels are completely off. The chemical makeup of their brain is imbalanced. Their right brain imbalanced. And in many cases, they're both left and right brain imbalanced. They're eggheads who are also cowards. The egghead side of it is over-intellectualization. And the right brain side of it that's off is you're willing to lay down the tyranny. A lot of people with uh, letters after their name that the, these titles are so proud of are just like that. Completely off and imbalanced. They're not even a man. That's not a, that's not a man. A male doctor. A male scientist. You know, most of these people are cowards. They don't care about anything but money. They're totally, you know, reductionist in their thinking about consciousness. And, you know, they're total egghead, over-intellectualized, left-brain imbalanced cowards. The, the thing I want to kind of wrap up on is the idea that, and it's, it's the second part of the main topic topics that I wanted to get into today, is and I brought this up because of the whole world situation, of what we're going through, again, you know, it's not like we haven't been through this before. Likely that we'll, be, we'll go through it again because it's probably going to come to bloody revolution. And again, that's just going around the big wheel of karma once again because you didn't get the message and do it through consciousness like it needs to be done to affect a true solution, not just a revolution. And again, it's because people don't have the courage to put a message of rebellion in their music anymore because they're too afraid of, oh, what are people going to think of me if I speak out? What might happen to me? Might an agent of the government come after me or something? You know, will I be harassed? Will I be watched? Will I be listened to? You know what? Who cares about any of those things? The you know, only reason that you're going to care about any of those things is if you're a chicken shit coward. Then you'll care about those things a whole lot. I could care less who's listening to me. I could care less who's watching me. You know what? All they can do is learn something from my words and attitude and behaviors. Maybe maybe by watching me and paying attention to what I'm saying and trying to record it all, maybe you'll learn something, little boy. Maybe you'll learn something, little girl. Time for you to grow up. You think I'm worried about who's listening to me, who's tracking my activities, who's tracking what I'm saying? Do it Do it as much as you want. First of all, I'm not afraid of you because I know that's all you are is a little arrested development, completely spiritually deadened being. What do I have to be afraid of that? I'm not afraid of you physically, let alone spiritually. And once again, c true courage is not the absence of fear. I'm not saying that you need to be completely fearless. You know, you be completely fearless, you could be reckless. Courage is moving forward with what you're doing that you know to be right in spite of whatever fears may be present. That means you could say to yourself, oh, I might be afraid of what the government might do, of what these order-following hordes of orcs might do to me physically because they're brainwashed morons but you know what that doesn't mean that you're not going to continue to do what you're doing anyway see that's where the absolute cowardice of most of the people of this society comes in they let their fear stop them from doing anything Stop them from taking right action. Stop them from learning. Stop them from understanding. Stop them from putting information forward for others to understand. 
And as soon as the word rebellion is spoken, they shut down. You know, the fear of that very word instills. I just recently listened to um, a uh, compilation of some former podcasts that I did before I took my hiatus many months back. This was actually before the Free Your Mind Conference when I talked about um, the Second Amendment, the true meaning and purpose of the Second Amendment when I gave that lecture live on the air over a period of a couple of weeks and then followed that up with a uh, show about the fear of rebellion in society. And I listened to it again and, um, you know, I mean, I have to be honest about what I thought about the job that I did during that pod, those series of podcasts. I'm sitting there listening to it and I'm thinking to myself, no one else practically no one else. I shouldn't use the term no one. It's a blanket statement that in this case is not true. Um, hardly anyone else. All too few people say things as plainly and clearly and unambiguously as this and have the courage to say it in that way. And I, I, I was just very happy with the job I did on that. And I was happy that the person who, you know, made that compilation of shows did it and put it out as a six hour video podcast. I'll probably link to that on this show today, on this podcast, because I think uh, the person did a decent job with the uh, slides that they put together for it from a, lo a lot of my work and some other slides that they uh, assembled. And, um, it conveyed the message really, really well, the way that they put the video together. And I was just thinking, you know, I wish more people would do something like this. Because a lot of people just won't say it plainly and clearly. They'll beat around the bush, they'll tiptoe around it, but they won't say things to order followers right in their face, so to speak. I mean, whether they're saying it through a podcast or to them directly in person. You know, when I encounter people in the military or, or police, I don't sit and bite my tongue just because that's what the job that they do or people who have relatives who do these jobs. I'm going to say what I think about it regardless of who is around me or what they think. If something is true, it's true. I don't really care about what they think. You know, people have this total fear that they allow to cut them off from what not only they want to be doing in many cases, but what they really should be doing and need to be doing if we're going to reverse this human condition of slavery. There's so many people who could probably actually do a good job with conveying information because they have a mind that, you know, can take in information and process it and understand it and then deliver that to others. But they're in this state of arrested development. You know, they've been shut down before they even begin. It really is like a child in many cases with these people. It's like a frightened child who says, oh, daddy told me not to go near that. You know, that's in daddy's closet. We don't, we don't go in there because that's where all his stuff is at. And he told us we don't go in there. You know, th this is really what it's like. It's like a psychological child. They can't get past that fear. They can't get past that idea that they've been told you don't go to that topic. You know, and so they obey. And as long as that courage is missing, they're going to remain enslaved. I mean, this is what a lot of occultists looked at as the ultimate answer, courage, more so than even care, more so than even knowledge and understanding. They looked at courage as the absolute essential ingredient in the awakening of the soul. Because it takes courage to even look into information 
to understand what's going on. That kind of courage is required. Not only courage to act upon right information, but courage to even take it in because they're so afraid of how bad things are and how ugly the truth is that they don't even want to do the work to take in the knowledge. And I mean, what really sickens me about people like that is they're squandering what our ancestors did for us. Which was, for a short amount of time, create a pocket of freedom in a world that was completely enslaved. Yeah, the encroachment came right back in and took, took it, you know, took that modicum of freedom that they built. This, you know, encroachment of tyranny. But, for a time, America was the freest and most prosperous place to live on the surface of this planet. And what the cowards of the modern day world, the men and women of America today, are doing is squandering what our ancestors fought and in many cases died to create here. And when I think about where I'm at, that saddens me greatly. Because Philadelphia is where that basically started. And the battles that took place near here, the, the men who died fighting tyranny near here, especially at a place such as Valley Forge, you know, I think about the spirits of those individuals who cared enough about freedom and who actually had the courage to do something when their freedom was threatened the way it was and ultimately gave their lives in many cases, the spirits of those individuals is completely at a state of unrest and cannot rest because of what's going on in this country now. I want to talk about another topic that really kind of irks me, and that's the concept of patriotism and what it really means to be a real patriot. You know, a lot of people attack this word now because it only means one thing to them. You know, this unidimensional thinking that, you know, something can't mean more than one thing to different people. Like, it's like when you say Satanist to somebody. When, when I'm talking about Satanism, I'm talking about it as an organized ideology that runs through occult networks throughout the world that has basic tenets such as rampant out of control self-interest and self-preservation at the expense of other people's rights and freedom in other words pure selfishness moral relativism social Darwinism and eugenics these are what I call the four tenets or the four pillars of the satanic ideology of organized institutional satanism as what I would call a dark occult religion you know the word satanism can also apply to people's perceptions of what satanism is which isn't what I'm talking about when I use the word just like the word freedom can mean more than one thing to different people you know, certain people think the state of freedom is present in the United States now because they have a very limited idea of what that word means. When I use the word freedom, I'm talking about true freedom, capital F. Capitalize all the letters in it to distinguish it from the fake form of freedom that is perceived by many people still. So the word patriot doesn't just mean one thing. You know, and so many people say, oh, you know, people who call themselves patriots, you know. That word has been co-opted and it needs to be taken back. It needs to be reclaimed by people who understand what the word patriot really means. 
I'm not talking about the fake patriots out there, the people who think government can do no wrong, statists who think my country can't do any wrong and I'll be loyal to it no matter what. It's not what a patriot is. Never was, never has been, is never going to be. Anybody who thinks that's what a patriot is, they don't know the meaning of the word. Patriots are, are people who have loyalty to the truth first and foremost. Real patriots. Not only do they have loyalty to the truth, they have loyalty to the other people living in their land who have loyalty to that truth. It's a brotherhood. Patriots are a brotherhood and a sisterhood of people who want real freedom. They're the real freedom fighters. People with real courage, real will to act. Not people who praise the military, who praise the police, who praise the state propaganda and say because this, this kind of control comes from our country, it's somehow good. I mean, give me a break. People like that daring to call themselves patriots are a joke. They don't know what real freedom is and they don't know the meaning of the word patriot. They're followers, just like the people they're, they're praising when they praise the military or the police. Image 121 shows what the, the military as the dominator force of the international banks and the dominator force of you know, the westernized world that is controlled by this, you know, the, the money masters and the occultists, the dark occultists who lie behind them. This is what they're being used for, used for. And again, anyone who thinks that it really isn't like this, if, if any soldiers happen to be listening, get as offended as you want to get. Because that's how it is. That's not my opinion. That's what is. You're under an erroneous assumption that it's not this way because you don't see things clearly from your identified perspective. You're being used, used. You are being used as a hired thug, a muscle man to go out and do whatever these international bankers command you to do and take whatever resources they command you to take. And if you don't agree with that statement, it doesn't mean that, that, my, that, that it's my opinion. It's not my opinion. It's that which is. And it doesn't also does not mean that your opinion is equally as valid because you're under a false, a, an erroneous opinion as to what your role actually is. And you can't see it clearly, again, from your identified perspective. That happens to be the case, what I just said. That's what is. And if you're, you don't see it like that, the bottom line is you're not being honest with yourself. You haven't stepped back and looked at it from afar and decided to be honest with yourself. Again, there's a, very, there's a famous quote that an honest man, once he has recognized the truth, will either, um, once he has recognized that he is, mis that he is mistaken, will either cease being mistaken you know, he'll correct his actions or he'll cease being honest. But, it, you know, th that's so powerful because isn't that really the case? What we're talking about here is people who just aren't honest. You know, they're not speaking the truth. They're not being honest with themselves above all else. So let's cut through it all and just be honest. This is what the military's role is. And if you don't see it that way, you're wrong. That's how it is. It's not my opinion. This is what they're hired to do, ultimately. To secure resources that this country happens to want and that the international bankers happen to want them to secure in the possession of the United States under the domination of the United States. And they go out there and act as hired thugs, period. And if you're offended by that, like I said, tough. That happens to be true. And it's the same way all the time. This never changes, this dynamic. This is how all tyranny always encroaches. 
no matter what society it happens to be. So image number 122 is a very powerful political uh, cartoon that the dominators that are soaking up all the resources that other people ultimately need and that we should be, first of all, in the, in the event of oil, shouldn't be probably taking out of the earth at all. There's been alternative uh, energy systems for 100 or more years available. You know, when we look at all the suppressed energy technologies that have been developed and out there since the days of Nikola Tesla and even before, um, all of this raping and pillaging of the Earth's resources is completely unnecessary. And again, that requires a lot of reading. That requires a lot of understanding as to what is possible by looking into the science and looking into the, the power of great inven inventors like Tesla and others. But this is what, because of this manufactured scarcity, this manufactured lack mentality that the military of this country always is involved in or any other tyrannical regime. They're telling you that they come as liberators, but what they're really doing is just stealing. They're just taking what they want so that they can hoard more for their later use and other people that may be using certain resources in a given area are deprived of it. So it's the, it's the dominator hoarding mindset that keeps the, the planet in this state of fear through the idea of scarcity, that there's not enough for everyone, that there's not enough to go around. And again, I'm not just talking about oil here. I, I think we shouldn't even be doing what we're doing regarding oil. I consider oil the life's blood of the earth, and we should not be tapping into the earth the way we're, we're doing it to take as much oil out of it. It's, it's not ours. What is ours is the energy that's inherently abundant all around us. That is for our use, not our abuse, but our use. And Tesla and many others had ways of employing that kind of radiant energy. And we're trying to explain it to the world. But they seem to be too far ahead of their time and their minds too advanced for the barbarians that were all around them in the past. And the majority of people today are in that same barbarian mindset, unfortunately. And that's why it's so difficult to get people involved and excited about something like free energy. Or they, they're so beaten down and downtrodden mentally that they believe that this is some kind of a pipe dream and that it's not possible. Not only is it, not, is it possible, it was being done a hundred years ago. And actively being suppressed since then. So an another thing that, you know, these dominators do when uh, stepping into this sick role is they're actively now involved in torture. You know, because if people don't want to comply, they need to be put into pain compliance. Police are doing this with tasers and sound weapons, and the soldiers are doing this with waterboarding and, you know, all kinds of other sick techniques that you see here in image number 123. You know, which synchro mystically adds to a six, which is all about failure, you know? Police are raping people's natural law rights, telling them they can't gather and speak. The, the blurring of the lines between police and military, the militarization of police. So image 123 and 24 shows you really what these sick individuals, these psychologically demented beings that have been turned into golems are doing to the human population. Because they, they think they have a right to do this. No such right exists for any of these activities. It does not exist. No more than if you just randomly tried to do this to other people. They haven't the right, period. And they should be stopped from doing this. People need to develop the will to stop them from doing this. Because that is a right. To stop wrongdoing is a right. And when you're shutting down people's right to free speech, you're building a totalitarian system and you don't have a right to do that. No one has a right to stop someone else from speaking, from peaceably assembling and speaking. I don't care what traffic you're blocking. This is always used as the excuse or the justification. It, it, it doesn't matter. 
Some, someone's right to drive is going to be su superseded by a, a huge group of people wanting to air their grievances. Someone driving isn't there to air grievances. Okay, They can step aside for a moment while a protest is taking place. The airing of grievances is more important than a motorist's uh, right to happen to pass by a, a particular street at a particular time. And get as offended about that as you like, that also happens to be the case. So if people are getting ready to, to and that's the whole point anyway, the whole point is to make it uncomfortable for people to inconvenience other individuals so people stand up and say, hey, maybe this is something I should be paying attention to. Maybe rights are being violated here by what these people are talking about. And maybe I, I shouldn't be so concerned into, to getting to where I'm going on time and I should be taking a listen to what's being said. You know, but no, the police don't think of anything like that. They say, I'm going to follow orders. I'm going to do what somebody, someone else told me to do that I believe I have the right to do and that I believe other people have to obey me, have to comply. Well, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. You haven't the right to do any of those things. You haven't the right to go and shut a peaceful protest down. You don't have that right. You never had that right. You never will have that right. No matter who tells you you have that right or not, it doesn't exist. Because the action of shutting down someone else's right to speak is a wrong. It can never be made into a right. It can never be justified, made into a right. You're always wrong for doing that morally under natural law. And whenever someone's rights are abused in such a way, they already possess the right to stop someone from abusing those rights, from usurping them, from attempting to take away something that is a right. You have a right to stop someone from doing that. The problem is there's not enough courage on the part of the population to stop these individuals. They believe they can't stop them. Well, believe me, if enough people said no and stood up and said, we're going to take action to back up that word, we're not just going to sit here and let you do this. If enough people did that, they would never be able to get it done. It wouldn't happen. And that's the problem in any totalitarian regime that has existed on this planet. Not enough people stood up and said no to domination, said no to dominators. You will not do this. We will use whatever amount of force required to stop you from taking other people's rights, from taking my rights and the rights of other people. In every totalitarian regime, there has never been enough people willing to come forward and do that. And I don't know about you folks, but I don't, I personally don't see enough people here in the United States standing up and saying that. That's the whole problem. They refuse to get involved in the non-support of these people and call them on their crap that they don't have any right to do this because ultimately it all comes down to self-loathing. It all comes down to the hatred of the self by the individuals do this. Nobody who's self-respecting could, could possibly put on that uniform and go and follow orders. It's impossible. Every person who was involved actively killing people in the Nazi party could not have had any self-respect. You can make the claim again in your words that you have self-respect, but you don't. In reality, you don't have any self-respect to do that. You would never treat another person like that if you had any respect. Again, that means to take another look at, and it means to take another look at your actions. So if you had taken another look at your actions and developed true respect, you wouldn't be doing things that are wrong. You wouldn't be taking wrong action with your body because you would respect yourself and you would respect truth. You would respect natural law. And none of these people have this attitude. Their attitude is, I hate myself so much because of whatever things have been done to me abusively in my life that I'm just going to go and take out my aggression on somebody else and hurt somebody. That's their attitude. They love hurting other people because they hate themselves. And let me tell you something. Yes, I do have this psychologically 
figured out. Yes, I do understand this dynamic. No, this is not my opinion. I understand how it works in the mind. You go deep enough into the mind of anybody who follows orders like this, and you're going to find this dynamic. Definitively. Definitively. It's not extrapolation. It's not interpretation. It's not stretching. I'm telling you, that's the case. These people ultimately at a deep psychological fundamental level nested, however deeply it may be in the human psyche, hate themselves. And that's the problem. That's the problem. And that's what our work is, is ultimately to teach these people that you're sick. You are ill. You are psychologically ill and you need help. You need help to become better so that you will not be ill anymore. That's the whole point. I'm not here to try to beat down these people even further than they've already beaten themselves down through their own self-loathing. I'm here to tell them there's an issue here. If you have any care about yourself or anyone else, which, hey, maybe it is beyond that point. Maybe that's the whole point. They don't. They just hate everything and have not an ounce of care left in them. That's what a true psychopath is. You know, the, people like this are becoming like a true genetic primary psychopath. Even though they may not have been born that way, they're what is known as a secondary psychopath. One who has become a psychopath in their mindset and ultimately in their behaviors. The image of slavery as a large mass of suffering and forcibly restrained slaves controlled by a few powerful and cruel masters is a very simplistic and false view of modern slavery. Nowadays, slavery is accomplished very differently. Modern slavery is as much tactical and psychological as it is brute force. By far, the best kind of slave is one who agrees to be a slave or who at least accepts the circumstances. And now psychological technology is used to cause people to choose slavery for themselves. I'll give you an example. Now it's important to keep in mind that slavery was black master and black slave for many centuries before European whites took up the practice. Slavery is more about power than race. The brutal tactics and psychology of slave making are no secret. The example, in the 1700s, in the southern slave states, a wealthy landowner might have the task of setting up a plantation. Slaves would be purchased and gathered for indoctrination. The wealthy farmer would accuse a young male slave of defiance or non-compliance. And that young man would be horribly punished and killed, perhaps lynched or drawn and quartered by horses. This would be done in front of the slave women. Those slave women were deeply traumatized by the public spectacle of gratuitous violence against the innocent young black male. The slave women would then raise their sons to be compliant and subservient. Young black children would be sternly educated by their mothers in the type of behavior necessary to stay in the slave master's favor. By seeing one or more horrific event, the slave women became the school the conditioning factory, the educators and brainwashers of the slavery collective, the new slave generation. An efficient system of slavery is not possible unless the slaves are made to enforce upon each other. By the time the black males reached adulthood, they were thoroughly conditioned by their parents and guardians to a slave's mentality and demeanor. This was the psyops of the 1700s, the shock and awe of the plantation system. Nowadays, the plantation owner is the state, the law, the police, the media, banks and corporations, and the slaves are you and I. In the old plantations, the result of demonstrations of cruelty and violence was voluntary compliance. Young black males had never been encouraged, even by their family and friends, to think independently to explore their aspirations and opportunities, or to believe in their own potential. Their souls and spirits were broken, their minds imprisoned, not just by the slave master, but by their own families and friends. Even when we can clearly see the slavery, we do not imagine that we are helping to create it 
by accepting and enforcing the rules and constraints that constitute the slavery. We warn our children to follow the rules so they will not be harmed by the state. This kind of social conditioning takes its toll. By the time the young black male plantation slave was working age, it was easy to see that he had no concept of how to question or defy authority, how to organize for justice, how to claim his rights, how to move against the system or how to control his own destiny. No idea. This is what our state, our schools, and our media do to us and ask us to do to each other. As much as the state promotes the concept of gender equality, the state constantly exploits the differences between the genders, using gender against gender. Men are characterized as bullies or simpletons. Women are characterized as victims or protesters. Media and the state want to divide us in any way they can. Women and men have fundamentally different psychology, but they are designed to be a complementary team. Our differences are not a problem. Those differences actually make us stronger when we are partnered as a family unit. Expressed in primitive terms, the man in reckless defiance will face the enemy. Whether it's an attacking tribe, the wild beast, the threat of nature's elements, the men will face the threat while the women will protect the children, will hide and will obey the orders of the protectors. These impulses are hardwired into the genders. Since ancient Egypt, this psychology has been exploited to create and control slaves. There need be no prison walls. There need be no constant administration of force. Slavery is programming, social and psychological programming. Force is only necessary for those who have accidentally or momentarily acted like a free and sovereign individual. Force is for people who forget to act like slaves. Regardless of how oppressed women may be in any given culture, they always have great influence over their men. Mothers have influence over their sons. Wives and female lovers have influence over their husbands and partners. By female influence, men are drawn into civilized behavior. These days, that means compliance with authorities, stable and conservative forms of livelihood, and behavioral moderation for social appearances to friends, neighbors, strangers, and authorities. In perhaps an overgeneralization, women are seeking safety and stability at all costs, while men are seeking adventure and freedom without due regard for risk. Women feel safer in a socially regulated environment, in a context of rules and monitored behavior, predictable ritual, and they press those sensibilities upon the men around them. The more reckless and coarse a man may act, the more pressure the woman will bring to regulate the behavior. So the slave master, the state, the collective, to be successful will target the woman, the rule follower, for initial compliance and cause that woman to then pressure compliance and servitude on those around them as they naturally tend to do. This may be called the woman's army, the front lines of the slave state, the essential mass of psychological influencers without which large-scale slavery would be impossible. Men are natural troublemakers, warriors, explorers, and there are too many of them to control with direct force by the state. Men will never be comfortable for long in the role of slave unless women are delegated to assist in the recruitment and management of the men's impulses for freedom. Women are more prone to accept and adopt rules without question. They are easily recruited to convey arbitrary rules to those around them. Women are highly influential in this way. Women are not helpless victims. They are society's best psychological influencers. They may believe they're helping the man succeed, but succeed in what? Volunteering for some form of pointless compliance, enlisting in some corrupt institutional agenda, acting like an obedient puppet to distant and mysterious control matrices, to pay all those taxes, fees, and fines, to enrich the state at crippling expense to the family and to society, to avoid conflict no matter what the cost. 
women's civilizing influence was very effective and necessary in more barbaric times. The woman's good intentions have now been seized and repurposed as a mechanism of state control, as a way to assert central authority. Again, I speak very generally. There are many women who value freedom, opportunity, and the prosperity it brings. However, there are many others who adopt and advocate senseless rules and processes simply because they believe it will lead to social harmony. It leads to slavery. Men are sensitive to the wishes of the women around them. We can be pushed into unnatural states by those we love and trust. You can have a responsible and confident man, or you can have a compliant and conforming man, but you cannot have both of those things in full measure in one man. You get compliance at the cost of responsibility and confidence. A man cannot think for himself while he's under heavy social pressure to conform to arbitrary behavioral controls. So how can the woman bring out the best in her man? Ease off on the manipulation? Encourage leadership and independent thinking? Perhaps, but it's actually, the fact is being a man is the man's job. The man and the woman have to understand that they have different psychology and different roles in the relationship. Not necessarily traditional roles, but complementary roles based on their particular personalities, skills, and temperaments. A good relationship is not one where one person is controlling another. It is one where each person is supporting the other. It is cooperation and shared purpose. Where the partner is strong, encourage that strength. Where the partner is weak, provide support. Never compete within the team. Eliminate all internal conflict. Apply the full partnership to the external goals. Regardless of gender, if we pressure each other in any way to become something we are not, to stop questioning authority, to accept whatever corruption, control, and taxation comes with a promise of peace and order, we are inviting and enabling our own slavery. The promise of protection from outside is always false, is always a Trojan horse, is always a lure, and it is a lie. Compliance of the masses is not merely important to the state. Compliance is not something the state merely desires. Without compliance of the masses, there is no state. The term slavery and the term compliance are basically synonymous. Servitude and submission to institutional and collective agendas corrupts the natural, local, and family cultures. And by participating, we forfeit essential independence and self-determination, not to mention our wealth and our futures. We must not devote our lives to a corporation unless we know that corporation is equally dedicated to us and our families. The sociopathic and despotic politician or the corporate controlled media can make laws and rules, can give us commands, tell us how to behave. They can take our money, our property, our freedom and opportunity. But how can we fight that when our friends and family members are repeating those same commands and values to us as if it was their idea? The problem is that we repeat to each other what we hear from our media, our institutions, our corrupt politicians, and our government-controlled school teachers. And we must begin to think for ourselves. We become puppets and parrots of the repetitious messages we hear, and we allow those messages to reach us constantly. We flood ourselves with media and entertainment, packed with subliminal messages and contrived behavioral examples. We immerse ourselves in behavioral programming day in and day out. The state teaches us to see all rules and all laws as good and all violators of those rules as bad. And this leaves no room for free thought or self-determination. No chance for reform of state-sponsored injustice. No ambition for personal advancement. We give corruption and tyranny a free pass and we defeat freedom, rights, and hope for personal prosperity by dreaming of how we can better please the plantation master as we hope that by pleasing that master we may receive an extra helping of beans. 
We're taught to never think for ourselves, to regard the largest, strongest, wealthiest institution as the one we must trust and join and whose rules we must follow. We find ourselves seeking and attaching ourselves to the nearest slave master because we have been told that is how our success shall be defined and measured. We will not be respected for our independence and creative thought, our self-reliance. We will be respected for the membership card we carry because we're not free men, we're slaves. When we see all media and public officials as wise, powerful, honest, and all citizens as subject to their decrees, we create a huge temptation for those who would enslave us, exploit us, tax us, rob us, own us, control us. There is a class of person who finds personal gratification in controlling others, planning for others, administering the lives of others. Those people are drawn to public service and high corporate office for that purpose. The sociopath gets a natural thrill from controlling people as objects for his own personal gain, to push people around as if they were on some chessboard, to call them not people, but human resources. You are a resource, not for yourself, but for the collective, the planners, the manipulators, the slave masters. You are a resource to be applied and consumed for the benefit of the collective. And you are presumed to agree with that unless you act otherwise. Many of us are perfectly willing to be dependent on public and commercial services without realizing this puts us in obligation of compliance, debt, and service to that system. But that system only exists to take what we have. Dependence is the mechanism through which you may be controlled and impoverished. There's no politician or bureaucrat who knows, loves, and protects you. If you're being offered something by an institution or a stranger, you are being lured into a trap. If it wasn't your idea, if you don't control it, you are a servant to it if you join, if you consent, if you participate, if you agree. Rules are always made to advantage the rule maker. A perfect example is traffic violation fines. The fine you pay enriches the court. It does not provide remedy to the victim because there is no victim. It is not a system of justice. It is a system of state enrichment. It is slavery. We were born to be responsible for ourselves. The adoption of external rules is fully artificial. If you are not making your own rules, you are being ruled. There's no safety or security in a system that keeps secrets from you, that takes and hides money from you, claims a monopoly on violence, and which uses that violence on a regular basis. A system which secretly creates massive crises so that it can offer fake solutions to those crises. And the solutions turn out to be more control, more taxation, fewer opportunities, rights, and freedoms. States are not benevolent paternal orders. States are human farms. We're all deeply conditioned for compliance by everyone around us. We're conditioned to have no integrity, no internal moral compass, no self-reliance, no curiosity, no doubt of authority. We are instead programmed with self-doubt and fear of failure in the eyes of some unseen slave master. We are kept in a state of fear and doubt by relentless media and political fear mongering. We are convinced that we must pay great attention to our choices of detergent and chewing gum. We don't create and live by our own standards, overcome our own fears and weaknesses. We strive to define ourselves by meeting the standards of others. Imagine there are three kinds of people. Those who control only themselves, those who control others, and those who are controlled by others. It is very obvious which of these three are healthier and more true to justice and human nature. It is very obvious that if you are being controlled by others, you are at the bottom of the social totem pole. If you are letting yourself be controlled, you are volunteering into slavery. We must begin to ask ourselves why a lifetime of work can produce nothing but a pile of debt. 
What is it about our laws, our institutions, our society that does that to us? Maybe compliance is not the solution. Maybe debt is harming us. Maybe consuming media propaganda all day has changed our mentality. Maybe institutions and corporations are constantly assaulting us with manipulations and diversions. Maybe they are sucking the life out of us. Maybe they are parasites. Our challenge in life as potentially free and independent individuals is to overcome the damage done to us in our youth as we were told to listen and obey. The damage that media and social conditioning do to us. The damage we do to each other. Parental mistakes, state propaganda, whatever. Our job as responsible adults is to discover and break the chains that are now invisible but tight around our necks, our heads, and our hearts. In the days of chained slavery, they needed to literally break the chains. In the days of psychological slavery, all we need to do is deny consent. Start questioning things and start making our own decisions. We cannot do this unless we start thinking more broadly, to wake up and recognize that slavery is all around us and we are part of it. You didn't think you were a slave. You have a right to own property. Can you own property without paying lifelong taxation for simply exercising that right? You have a right to keep what you earn. Are your part of your earnings taken in unpaid servitude? You have a right to be left alone, yet innocent people have their property and liberty foreclosed on a daily basis, not for any real crime, but for non-compliance, for nothing other than defiance of the slave master, for behavior that threatens the sociopathic judge or police officer, or simply enrich those who have borrowed the state-granted privilege to take what is yours. Can you even exercise your right to travel without paying for licenses for your vehicle and yourself as a driver. You are being taxed and penalized for exercising your rights. The law says your rights may not be infringed. Our labor, our freedom, our rights are being taken every day. We are slaves. In the USA, we have more than five times as many people in prison per capita than even the most overtly oppressive regimes on the entire planet. 85% of the people in our prisons committed no property damage, no violence or injury. 85% for what are called crimes when there was no victim. So for harmless behavioral non-compliance, you can go to prison for 10 years, five years, 20 years. It happens every day. This is not a free state. And as I speak, the police are militarizing. Slavery is about to go to a whole new level. The good news is most of it happens simply because we consent. We don't question. We don't hold public servants accountable. We don't demand their swift removal when they displease us. These mistakes are easy to change. People cannot be governed without their consent. If people are giving blind consent, complying, never questioning, never speaking out, they can not only be governed, they can be abused, taxed, imprisoned, or killed without consequences. The powers that be have clearly shown that they will take everything and anything that we allow them to take, anything we don't vigorously protect and defend, and they will never punish their own for the crimes they commit against us. Try to see yourself as the powerful elites see you. You are not regarded by greedy public institutions as free and independent people. You are presumed to be agreeing and complying with their agendas, plans, rules, and programs. You are presumed to be obligated and subject to punishment for non-compliance of policies you had nothing to do with creating. You are expected to pay your fees and taxes to adjust your behavior and to warn those around you to do the same. You are presumed to agree to all that because they found that when they presume you to be a slave, that many of us will play along. They seized upon our psychological flaws and weaknesses as the primary mechanism of their control. We're so conditioned that government can now create slaves by simply expecting us to be slaves. That is why any government, state, collective, or dictator will always claim the support of the silent. 
They simply invent the idea that you wish to be controlled and then they will proceed to control you unless you resist. If you're looking around at what government and corporate interests are doing, if you can see where it is leading, it should be very clear that we had better start making some noise. We had better start providing some resistance. Any casual observer can tell you that what we now have is an emerging police state. Of course, we're told we have a free country so that our eyes will glaze over in reflexive national pride. In the 1960s, reactionary nationalists used to say, America, love it or leave it. Those who were more observant and thoughtful would answer, America, change it or lose it. That was 50 years ago. We didn't change it. And we're now losing it. How do we get America back? How do we regain freedom and opportunity and prosperity? By refusing to be slaves. By turning off the propaganda. By setting our own goals and making our own decisions. By questioning authority. By commanding our own lives.